Senior Sip the Team. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Chart Talk, episode 47. Going through some member charts, some social media questions, all that good jazz. Uh, Bennett, just getting back from LA. Nice little meetup out there. It's fun to meet some members. It was a real good time. I was very tired this Monday. Uh, well worth <laughs> it. Uh, how was Scottsdale? How, how to treat you? Scottsdale was good. Saw some odd horses and did a little rafting. Okay. Yeah. Made it back before the quarantine got very much more strict than it was when I was there. Okay, that's good. You made it home? Made it home alive just in time for the chart talk. Perfect, perfect. Ben, I got these new Nikes. I think you would love them. Okay. Do you want me to get you a pair of these? They're called the Dog <laughs> Walkers. They're fly. I know. I know. Let me know if you want me to get you a pair. I got you. I got the Connect. Everything's lined up. I mean, I think I also still, still skateboard my loafers. Oh, yeah. Oh, ben, on Venice Beach, making a fucking mockery of himself, skateboarding in fucking loafers. Oh, God. All right. I was, I was, I was ripping the ball. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was ripping the other ball. Um, <laughs> all right, let's get into it. Let's go right. into it. Mark that look. Let's do it. Cool. What we got on our hands is an absolute chop fest going on. Um, the easy move, the meat of the move from lows to highs, that's done with. So now, But now everyone wants to be a buyer, so we can anticipate some choppy behavior just like we're seeing this week. Um, so, you know, the new news, Corona's back, and that's, that's taken over the media, the headlines right now. So that's causing us to sell off a bit. Um, those stocks are back in, back in action. We're going to watch uh, this 300 area. becomes a very big area. Um, and then the NASDAQ, that's the S&P. And the NASDAQ is still well, very much well within its uptrend. So we had a couple rough days, but uh, we've been on such a tear that, like, to have a down day has almost been weird. So like, you know, and then, um, but we're seeing that we're still in this uptrend. We're going to have to see if this trend line holds up in the here in the NASDAQ. And that kind of coincides with this 300 area in the S&P. So I'm going to look for a pivot in that area or some more weakness. I think we'll, we'll probably uh, sink to that level uh, the rest of this week. What, do, what are you thinking here? Oh, let me get you. I got your chart, your, uh, t uh, chart up. Well, what you got, VCR? VCR. So yeah, so like a week ago, even the prior week, we were talking about how we look to take profits into the retest. And at that time, most people were like, well, why are you trying to sell if the market's breaking out? But again, when you all good, Chase? Yeah, yeah, no, I was, I was, I was agreeing. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, we look to sell into the retest, but at those times, it tends to look like so perfect. You know, it looks like it's just going to blow through 206 and continue higher. But we've seen this many times. We took some profits. And now, as, as Sheik mentioned, with, the, with this chop fest, or as this, these sectors start to flag, we've already locked in profits in basically at the highest price we could have. And now as it chops around and, and sets up for you know, a few weeks or a few months, we'll look for that next entry. Um, and there's one other sector, Sheik, you want to put up for VNQ. Oh, I got it. All right, so this is one where, again, we can see that horizontal, like that dashed line over 80. We can see that's been resistance you know, for the real estate sector for you know, the past few months. So... You know, as we've been trying to buy to that level, now that it's setting back up, that'll be the next spot. You know, if it continues to pull back, you know, maybe it breaks 75, maybe it comes back into the high 60s, we'll look to get in there. But in the meantime, if it does turn back up through 80, that's a spot we'll be looking to add to um, the real estate sector. All right. I think with that shape, we'll jump into, oh, we actually got to pick out who won uh -huh. last week's canvas. Oh, giveaway. We'll pull up the. Uh, I got it. Oh, the, I got it. We got Alex, Alex Smith. Smith. So Alex, if you want to shoot us a DM at your address, we'll send you out this. We also got in the new Trading Expert t-shirts, so we'll throw in you know, one of those and maybe a couple of little goodies. Um, and then again, same thing for next week. You know, The best comment, anyone who shares, likes, or subscribes to the videos will be entered into it, and we'll, we'll give away a surprise next week. I'm not going to tell what it is. Um, and then with that, Shake, if you want to jump with some member ideas. Let's jump right in. Uh, Joe DeFrank, he's a guy that's R E Y N through 35. It's a recent IPO. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Holding up really well in this, uh, in the mess this week. This name is pretty disconnected from the market. If this can break this area, that looks very good. And he's, look, and he's also got team through 180. Team, huh? Whole I mean, team that makes up. I mean, it makes sense because it's such a strong, uh, 
it's been it's been an absolute market leader. But you know, after today's sell off, if we bounce back that quickly, then yeah, maybe. Um, it's it, it's definitely a stock you want to have a focus on. Uh, I'm not sure it's ready yet though. Just sold off, so you know, we're I'll, I'll watch it for for a setup or a dip buy or something. But definitely a name you want to be looking at. All right, where are we going from here? Uh, next, we got a question from uh, Andrew Moffat. He goes, he's, he said he's having a difficult time viewing the stock independently of what I'm feeling once I'm in the trade. So he's saying the difference between you know his conviction before getting to the trade and his conviction once he's in it. And he's asking, if there, is there any way to kind of help separate that feeling, that you know anxious feeling once you're in the position? Well, that's why, I mean, that that is the whole reason we set game plans and we want to take all the emotion out of trading so that because it's only natural. We're humans. We're going to feel these feelings. When everything's green, we're happy. When everything's red, we're sad. So, um, you know, that's just like put a bigger focus on game plans and risk reward and targets and things like that. And just let stocks work for you. And then, you know, from there, you journal your trades. You find where your mistakes are. And, you know, it's, it's all just a process, a getting better process. So, you know, just keep working on the process and everything comes. Everything comes if you focus on the process. Yeah. I've also noticed even like just watching some of the trades, I know today, and recently, he's been focusing on like such a shorter time frame with some of the setups, where that might also be something where you know if he's looking at a daily chart and then he's dropping down to a five minute and he's like watching every tick, you know that could mess with anyone's emotion. So yeah. you know that is an issue. Maybe just focus on the bigger time frames and and watch some of this stuff a little bit less yeah. less closely. Um, next, we got a couple of questions from uh, Vishal. He asked, "What's a good percent return annually for a trader's first year?" I mean, it depends on the trader. I know guys who have like lost 50% their first year and they're absolute beast traders. And I know guys who have made like 100% their first year and they're, they're not either, they're out of the biz. Uh, so I don't think you have to really worry too much about, I don't, there's not a magic number like, oh, you made 15%, you're going to be a great trader now. Like, it's just, again, like focusing on the process, getting better. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of the time, your first year of trading has to, has to deal with the market. You know, you're going to be kind of a beta trader. The market does really well, you'll do really well. Um, so I just think you, that first year is about taking lessons getting your uh, tuition from the market over that, over whatever great return you're looking for. 15% is good. I'll take it. Yeah. And even with that, I think even he's just trying to flex on us. Like, ah, I dropped a 15 on him my first year. Yeah, no, he, he didn't mention his return yet, but that was just kind of, and oh. even, even, I think it's even on my end, it's more, you say he's got 10,000. It's like, it's, you know, in my head, my goal would be like lock in a thousand dollars. Forget about the percentage return. Cause again, it's going to move with the market, but making sure that I locked in like a certain amount of profit in that year yeah. and then the next year doubling that goal and then continue to compound that goal over time. That's good. You know, if you're making money, you're going to have a positive return. So just, those are kind of those, you know, compounding effects that build up over time. Um, next question he asked, can a macro level turn irrelevant with time, even though it's been trading near that level example beat B E A T. What's the, what's the macro level here? I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I think he's looking at this one. I don't know. That's not a really clean level. So, um, I mean, what we want to take out of levels is that it's kind of like it's uh, it's where stocks have memory. You know, stocks have memory of their levels. So they usually have levels regardless. This isn't a very clean chart. I don't see this macro level that he's really talking about. So I would say yes, whatever macro level he, here is probably irrelevant. But um, I don't overthink that. Just, you know. Um, Stocks have levels because they have memory of, of the prices, and that's the way it works. I think that's better to focus on than the once-off yeah. guys that don't, you know, have any effect towards the level. Yeah, I think even the longer the level is there, the more significant. I don't think it ever. Oh, yeah, like yeah even, that's that's pretty classic. Like I, I think of like Microsoft with like sub forty for like you know twenty years, and yeah. then once it got above forty, it was forty, in two, you know, three years. Exactly. So I think the longer those levels set up. The more significant, they're, they're never irrelevant. Oh um, yeah, completely, completely. Yeah, um, and then let's we got one more. Uh, he goes, this again, it's very biased. He goes, I saw a lot of buying the last five to fifteen minutes on Friday. Was it because the setups were strong, or was it because the buyers were expecting it? Yeah. No, I mean, I mean you know, right before the weekend like that, it's yeah. so random. There's no way to know. Yeah. There's just no way to know what's going on. He was, he, Michelle, fine. you were just, you were just looking for that information. Like you just saw. You right. just see like a bunch of closed orders, like marked orders at the close, and just right. assuming that like, this is some secret information when it's it's really not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no one's gonna know. Uh, let's see, some some setups. He's looking at AMD, fifty five. Yeah, I mean, if this AMD, uh, I got. I mean, I'll talk about this trade later. Yeah, well, if it gets back above this fifty five, it should be good. Um, but right, we saw it fail the this little micro flag today with the market weakness, so that probably needs some time. We got to see if it holds this fifty two area first. 
Uh, let's see, and he's got KHC. KHC? Yeah, Kraft. Kraft? Buy some ketchup. Mm, uh, mm, he's looking at this macro base. I get it. And then you, you, you look at the daily, and it's got this nice little trend here. So it's like you're buying off support, but there's also this macro resistance level overhead here. It's okay. I, I don't love this name. It's just so beaten up. So, yeah. you know, I don't expect this hitting 40 anytime soon. This is like more a name that I would trade, and I'm like, meh. Yeah. Like even like for the gap fill to 36, like if you're going to take this trade, like I'd rather just wait for the gap fill, like when it's going to get through 36 and, ha you know, try to suck into that gap. But just trying to like sneak in here when there's nothing really clear to find, it's just, there's probably better things out there. Yeah. And then we got, we'll do one more because he sent me like 45 tickers. So we're going to just go through the list. Uh, let's do HCA 100. HCA? No, yeah. I, this is literally, I put this on the shakedown as a short this week, and, and, and it was a good short today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, this is a short through this little 99 area. Um, just, just beating down on that support too hard, too much overhead resistance. When we saw what the market weakness today, it triggered. So I like this one short. Sorry, sorry, Michelle. It's funny because I was buying this up through 110 and I got stopped out, break even. This was like end, beginning of June. And then now you're, it's always buying through resistance. Now you're shorting through support. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, well, that's how these things work. It's either a great support yeah. buy or it fails and it becomes a short. It's an inflection point. It's got to make a move from here. It's either got to hold this 100 and go back up here towards this 120 or it's got to fail and go to this 80. Uh, not those exact numbers, but you, you get the gist. Yeah. No, of course. Uh, next, we have David Taylor looking at Intel, I N T C. For a support buyback up through 60. Yeah, I'm still long this Intel. We, we first started buying this Intel fucking around like the 60 or whatever. Then we had a monster buy here. Then we have the same exact trade right here. And it's done well. I haven't really added since. I added a little bit on this inside day when it was holding the support area. But if this if the market holds in there and this can break up again through the 61 area, um, holding mm -hmm. the 200 day and everything, I like this one a lot. Now, are you still giving this verse 58, or are you still giving it verse the bigger support at 56? No, I'm still giving it verse 56. This is just um, complete macro stock for me. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have a core position where I don't want to overthink it. We were talking about Andrew Moffitt before, looking at two small time frames. I'll have that same problem, too, because I love grabbing so much size, and I love, you know, day trading a bit when I see volume, things like that. But I always make sure that I keep a macro position to the true out so that, you know, I'm always watching it. In case, uh, cause in case he wants to leave without me. So, um, yeah, so I still got a little macro position versus 56 there. All right. Now I'm going to pull up some of the social media questions that we got today. Just give me one second. All right. We got Andres underscore AP20. Andres, what up? Looking at XL and X. Yeah, he was saying buy this one up through uh, 94. I think... You know, for these these kind of break it down trend names, you want to see really quick follow through for these. So I don't think this is ready yet. I don't think this is a name you want to buy the dips on because if you look at its long term chart, it's still somewhat in a macro downtrend. It didn't break higher, um, like mm -hmm. the, like we were looking for. But uh, so I'm gonna wait for this one to flag out and I'll buy it on the way up again. Or uh, I didn't buy this one the first time, but I'll look for it around this 95, 96 area. I think it just needs time though. Mm -hmm. And then next we got. Uh, Pink ZZXX. He's looking at Microsoft. He wants to buy 200. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> how can I fucking hate on it though? It's, it's fucking up every single other day. I mean, there's no, there's no yeah. like technical entry for that 200. But I mean, it's the strongest name on the board every day. This Amazon, all those big dogs are just holding the Nasdaq up. So you know, I can't hate on it trying to buy Microsoft. I don't think you should buy 200 tomorrow, but you know, uh, it's still a name that you should be looking to buy on dips. Yeah. Um, let's see. Polish Dan 51. At what point do you know to sell a call? I don't fucking know. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> see ya. It's like, yeah. Uh, I'll just, uh, Polish Dan, you probably got to own 100 shares first and you probably don't in that name. So you're probably not even able to, you know, sell that call regardless yeah. for income. Uh, let's see. Curly headed coal. I O N S. Yeah, Ooh. buddy. 60. Oh my god, that was my top video for the week. Oh, it? it's on my list too. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. What's a few right. fucking stocks between friends? All right, so uh, yeah, I love this. I love this one. This is one of my I'm pretty, favorites. I'm pretty sure Curly Headed Cole is like 15 years old. I gotta double check that after this. <laughs> pretty sure he's a really young guy. Um, Jake Lundstrom, ESPR 48. 48, huh? 
Yeah, forty-eight fifty. If this one rebounds, I mean, um, it got it saw that weakness today. So continue to watch this area. I'm not sure it'll be ready for tomorrow. It could be. This is just uh, we kind of got to wait and see for this one. Yeah, this was like a, a bigger picture idea back in March, up to forty. So you know, I like it down there, but it's still it's okay. Um, let's see, Luke eleven twenty-five. Uh, you, uh, how do you just when you have dozens of charts and setups that look good, what other factors help you decide which position, positions to take and which to avoid? Um, so, I mean, that's that's like the main thing I, I try to decipher every week because we go into every week with so many setups. We go probably with 30 setups, you know, and like how do you decipher the three to five you're going to take or whatever it may be. And for me, mm -hmm. it comes down to volume and price action. I want to see – I'm always studying relative strength against the market and sector strength. I'm trying to figure out what sectors are relatively strong against the market, and then that'll usually lead me towards my decision. I'm always trying to find volume. That's that's the main key for me here. The one thing I'll add, um, it's like I'm like again, you're usually very heavy in very specific names. I tend to spread spread my money map money around a little bit more. So something I do is I'll have like a bunch of orders in the system. So let's say that there's ten ideas that I like for the week ahead on Monday. I'll have those ten orders in. By Tuesday, if I go back through those 10 orders, there's probably one or two that I probably don't like as much or it's probably not going to trigger that week where I can just take that one out of the roster and then if there's something else I like, I can sub it back in. So a lot of mine is just you know constantly just updating the, the orders I have in the system. Right, so you're, I would say yours is more autonomous where you're just kind of taking these setups regardless and I'm, I, I, I'd never do that. I would never. I got to see where the action is to, to buy something. So this is interesting. Uh, different strokes for different folks. Different strokes for different folks. Next, we got Aid, Aiden Goodman, twelve, twelve. He's in Airbus, which is E A D S Y, yes. and he's getting he's getting smoked in it, and he has no idea what to do. Oh he says, I, he says, I bought in uh, a week ago. Should I get out now, or wait it out? No, get out. Get the fuck <laughs> out. Get the fuck out of this one. Uh, yeah. This one, it, you know, it had its fucking dead cat bounce right here, and then you know. Overhead resistance caught up to it. Weakness. Uh, this probably goes lower back towards this 12 area. You know, just that's what just the price action says. So yeah. I don't think you wait this one out. Just this is fucking trash. Yeah, this is like for all the airline. Hopefully Garrett cuts this in like a one minute video. For all the airline people like two weeks ago, they're like, this airlines are back. Da, da, da. Yeah, it's not, like when you were buying this. Client, that, huh? when you, yeah, now it's quite. But this is a perfect example. When they were buying, you know, for this Airbus, you know, basically above 20 was when everyone was really pumping it. Now you're getting smoked in it, and if it does come back down to 12, you're down 50%. So for us, we aim for 5 to 1. You'd have to get 250% out of the stock. The stock doesn't go back to 100 for you to make that risk back, and this is the exact reason why we try to avoid the names that 99% of people on Rob Hunter stock test are right. telling you to buy because yeah. they're usually always so late, and this is an exact reason. Now he's, he's you know panicking. He's, he's tried no matter what he's going to do, whether he pukes out tomorrow or the next day or tries to ride it out. It's just... So it's just a trade that could have been easily avoided had he asked this before he put the trade on. So we just told him that's a stupid idea. Now we have to tell him it's stupid, but he has to lose money. Hey, so. hey, you never learn a lesson like losing money, okay? He's going to be better next time. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll next, see. Ashy, <laughs> uh, Ashy Arson, we're going to buy Chewy. Ooh. Chewy. Oh, fuck too. yeah. I love Chewy. I use Chewy for my pup. I got no, no qualms here. I mean, there's a momentum flag. Still strong. You know, this can go higher. Why can't it go higher? It just went higher, just beasted this little 45 flag here. Um, so, yeah, above that area, I mean, it makes sense. Above that 5250-ish, 53 area. Why not? I um, mean, the other one is just DXCM through 420. Hey, um, um, uh, nah, this, need, this just broke highs. Not, not, this needs to draw out a pattern more. Um, this, yeah. So this needs a lot more sideways before we can enter. Strong name, love that you're gravitating towards strong names, but just needs more time. Yeah, it's like if you made any money in this name through 100, through 150, through 200, through 300, it, you know, up into 400, it's like that's maybe you take it again. But if this is your first time just looking to get into it now, after the crazy tear it's been on, it, it's probably best to wait it out a little bit. Yeah. Um, Johnny underscore Fulton eight I L M N off 360 support with the macro 380 level in mind. Okay. All right. That's a that's a well put together game plan. I like it. Um, I don't necessarily uh, if it you know, he's saying, what buy off this little area off today's low, and if it's up, it goes back on the way up. Yeah. I mean, in a perfect world, 
You know, I, I wouldn't game plan that. All these things, everyone wants to buy up right off support tomorrow. We don't know if uh, we're going to get that reversal yet. So it's like, I'll keep this on my radar type thing, but A, B, and C have to happen for me to do this. So yeah, in a perfect world, it pivots or something and then rips back higher and you buy it for 360 against this pivot. Then yeah, that'd be a great first entry. And then maybe, you know, mm -hmm. add some if it sets up later through those highs. But again, that's that's perfect world trading. That's that's tough. Yeah. It's like he's got to really give this verse like 350, 330, I'm sorry. And that's being, you know, very conservative for this yeah. name. Yeah, no, that 330 price. pivot I think is, is a good spot. But uh, I don't think that's what he's trying to do. Yeah. I mean, he's a great chart. Just and I like, no, I like the trade idea and, the, and, and you know, how, how he worded it. So that was really, really good. Yeah. Um, last one, Kyle uh, Guerrero, 22. Is buying Tesla at 900 to 1,000 a good idea? Um, so what we're seeing is um, it's, it might not be because uh, – so the last time we were trying to buy Tesla, it was in this flag. Some of us still caught it. Shout out Zord. Zord's still in this thing, I think. Um, but that was real last technical setup. You could have bought here, this 850 area, a momentum. But I think since then, it hasn't really given a great setup. I know it had this monster day off 900. But now we're seeing it just looks a little tired, looks exhausted up here. You know, it traded above 1,000. You know, it like checked it off the, the belt or whatever you call it. But um, now it's kind of you know running out of steam, so I think this I think Tesla might cool off for a little bit. Yeah, just a casual three hundred percent run up in three months. Well, I mean, we were trying to buy this eight hundred, <laughs> and it seemed nuts, but then it went right to yeah. you know ten ten thirty. So you know, Very Tesla's true. a different animal. The beast. All right, I think with that we can jump into some of the good trade bad trades of some of the Alpha members. Okay. Want to start with? Want to start with Natalie with that uh, Papa John's? Oh uh, man, that's just yeah, that's just. Okay, she, I mean, she got in um, on a weekday of the market, tried to buy a breakout. This, there's no problem. I don't think there's any problem with this trade. It's one of those that just didn't work out because the market uh, turned down on that exact day. So if you buy a breakout when the market sells off, it's just it's never going to work. Like, very yeah. rarely works. So um, I don't think Her that's... Her question a, will... Uh, is her stop too tight? No, no. Yeah, it's like, I think... No, no, no. Because break. If, you, if you buy a breakout like this, you want to see follow through right, right, right away. So you want a tight right. stop on these things. Um, so, no, I like her trade. It's just, you know, the pro you, we play probabilities, and that'll work out more times than not. 100%, yeah. I think it's a great, for a failed trade, it's a great failed trade. Yeah, exactly. Next, we got Fabio in this uh, CREE. Oh, yeah. Right. And so, where did he buy this? 45? It's a, so, it's he a bought up through 55 half. Uh, he had a $1 stop. It was low a day. It was first 54 half. Um, his target was 61. He sold a third for three to one at 60. He sold the next third for five to one at 61. And then he got stopped out of the remaining at 59. That's a great trade. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Love this trade. It's yeah. perfect. So, um, so yep. Yeah. So and then he here and then got stopped out. It's a little white line. Love it. It's good shit. Good trading. Um, next, his other trade was Regeneron. So, but he's still in this. So he bought up through. He's got the monster uh, macro level, right? Yeah. So he he bought up through five ninety four. Fuck it, this thing's such a beast. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean this. I mean market weakness today. Uh, this thing's you know been on such a crazy run. So you know just some people taking profit looks like uh, he's still in it. He's still in it. He has a stop verse that like. That supports it and hold that that five seventy five. Five seventy five. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that's that's you know, if you want a stock to prove you're wrong, that's that's where you got to give it to in this Regeneron. So I, I like his game plan. At least he's gonna he's gonna let the stock work for it, and if it doesn't work out for him, uh, at least his, he had a good game plan, and it'll work out more times than not. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, this could almost be one at this point. You know, since it has came, you know, it's getting close to his price. Like if it were me, I would just up it to break even at this point. But yeah. If you got to take it straight, how you want to take it, right? Um, and then next we got uh, Heaven with Netflix. What up, doggy? Oh, I got a heat tested in. Hell yeah, he fucking crushed this trade. All right. Yeah. He bought he bought this inside day. That was when the market sold off. This is when uh, 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 uh. Bennett had the little sword noodle arms from fucking wakeboarding. Whatever the fuck you doing? We were out here buying the dip. Me and Heaven were out here buying the dip. So great trade. He bought through the inside day here. Where'd he kick? Let's see. He bought uh, 427, yep. kicked a third into 440 ish. Whatever. And then trailing the rest under 454 for 14 to 1 risk reward. See that? That's fucking beastly Beast. trading. That's fucking Please. sick. That's what happens when you don't sleep in on Mondays. When you, when you only get noodle <laughs> arms from buying the dip, these are the type of things that happen. 
So not sleeping, just was not clicking buttons on that day. Um, all right, let's see. Next we got uh, Michelle. KMB. So this was this was in his opinion a bad trade, um, just because he got oh sh- I, uh, he got shaken out. Oh, good shit, heaven. Um, uh, KMB. So yeah, oh god, jeez, how do you? All right, no, no, no. This is great, amazing entry, amazing entry, amazing entry. But um, this is uh, uh, we get this question so much. It's like when we, when we buy things that have a sick day, I almost get fucking anxiety about the next day because everyone's like, oh my God, where's my stop? Oh my God, everything's, oh my God, everyone's so worried about giving back the profit. And that's exactly what happened here. He's, this thing pulled back to yesterday's high of day and he sold it. Like, how can you expect, how can you expect to, to you know, be a part of the macro move if you can't give something, a, you know, a fucking cent, <laughs> you know, from where it closed. So you gotta keep that stop if you want the macro move. But, um, you know, and I, he'll learn from that. But yeah, yeah, he just he just moved the stop way too far up too quickly. But I mean, he made money. He made money, so I mean. Yeah, and that's something where like he's like his target was exactly where it went to. KMB has just been flagging in this range for the better part of almost a year and a half now. Right. So the fact that he saw that now, next time in the back of his mind when he does get that support buy, it's gonna be like, well, that KMB work. Let me let me give this one a little bit more space, and then yeah. he's going to give it space, and go back to break even, and he's going to want to change the rules again. But eventually, in time, those will those will all stick. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Next is uh, he did this piton. Hey, piton! I'm in this piton. Um, I, I I sold most today. Uh, I sold I think the last piece today. But uh, um, yeah, this was that when Corona started popping back up. This was one of the great names. Uh, what did he? Let's see what he did. Piton. Well, 48.30 with us. Oh, he got emotional. Sold third at 49 instead of adding. And you know when he did it? He hit up the update chat. And he's like, Peloton <laughs> looks weak, remember? And I was yeah. like, dude, just keep that stop. Peloton looks strong. I hit him up later today. Peloton looks strong. But um, then he sold the half at uh, 53, and he's swinging the rest. So good shit on the, the second half. So pretty much he just got emotional that second day after these buys. And same thing with Moffitt we were talking about earlier. That's why we just make the game plan so you can just tune out the emotions. Just set the orders and... Don't touch them. Don't fucking overthink these things because this is what happens, you know. And you're, and then when you do, when you do get emotional and you change your game plans, the the way the human brain is wired is like you don't want the pain. So your your winners, you're gonna sell them too early, but you're still gonna take on the full loser. So you're gonna take 100% of your loser, but you're not gonna get 100% of any winner. And then you're not gonna be profitable. Like I had a problem with that in my early in my career too. And then I learned that lesson where it's just like you gotta stick with your game plans, and that's really it. Otherwise. Because over the long term, it's just going to catch up to you. There's maybe one off or two times you'll be happy you like made a drastic change to your game plan. But over time, I'm telling you, it'll be a game changer. Just stick to your game plans. Yeah. And who was the one who called Piton to 50 by the end of June? Was that me? That was you. Hey, I make, I make fucking 100 calls a day. Some have to work <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah. Can I make another one? 100 by December? No. no, no, no. But I, I still got some in the long term account officially up 100% today from 27. Got to take, yeah, nice stuff. All right. Um, so, Bisha, yeah, if you were, instead of an update, you were an alpha, you might have not emotionally sold that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get you back an alpha one. <laughs> All right, next Sheesh. we got um, Anisha, N-V-A-X. All right, he bought this for, damn, this thing's, damn. Yeah, oh, thanks. he got stopped out here. That's the worst. He got stopped out at 62. That's that's brutal though. The 68 to 62 pull in, or 60 to 8 to 60, you know, it's a 12, 15 percent pull in. So I don't blame you for uh, getting stopped out on this one. But great entry, great hold, great first kick, second kick's really nice. Damn, missed the meat though. Yeah. So what I try to do is handle my stock in thirds, just like he did. But that last third, I'm just gonna try to keep that, give it a wide stop, so you can just stay in it. So like. You know, like I'm still in this. I don't. I don't talk about it really a lot because I'm just kind of holding it and swinging it. Like Snapchat has been fucking killer for me. I just have such a wide stop on the last third that I can handle the meat of the move. Um, so my recommendation here: give that last third a wider stop. Great first kick, second kick, great entry. Um, just work on that last third. Here we yeah. go. All right. Next, we got uh, Casey Roger and his PK, uh, PKI. You know Alex Shucker's sister? Yeah, yo, she's fucking killing the jewelry <laughs> game. Um, she, wanted, she wanted me to joke with you that you, you didn't know that they were the brothers. Yeah, it's so funny they said that. And I was like, <laughs> oh man, I should have known this. So I was like, what? You got a sister, brother and sister? And then I was like, 
Oh man, I should I should have not said that. I should have pretended like I knew the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is sick though. Both the breakout on PKI, sold the quarter and then sold all. Like that's where you should get stopped out. Perfect. She got out right at the beginning of the day too. That looks like uh, that's a really good trade. That's how to maximize your winner there. Uh, so that one looks good. Um, Tommy, yeah. our boy, Tommy Birdwell. Yeah, this is the last one from Member Idea. N K L A. All right, N K L A. This thing is a fucking ripper. Um, so nice. He's buying off support and kicking. This is perfect. This I love this. Just literally just playing this range. God, he's, he's just only buys the high and sells the low. God, good. the perfect trade. Um, <laughs> this is sick though. This is really nice trading. See, he had the support level. Kick some. Uh, held on to a core. Bought some. Kick some. Kick some. Kick some. Buy some more off support. You know, and I hope he has a little bit of stock left in case this thing wants to run. This thing's pretty relatively strong, but oh, it's not that whole position today. Um, looks great. Looks great. Looks great. I like that. Uh, who's next? Bio Marin. Is this you? Oh, uh, that's yeah, that's it. Yeah, jump it. We'll jump to me. Okay. Uh, this is this yeah. is sick. I was looking at this chart. This looks sick. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is Bio Marin. Been in this for a while. Um, took a start. Here's the Bio Marin Ooh. level. I'll show him real quick. Why? Why oh, yeah, 100? This is something we've stared at like. Fucking five years, yeah. These biotechs, <laughs> these biotechs woke up this year. They're like the best. You know, this is when our, early in our career, the biotechs were so good, and they fall off the map. And now they're finally, finally back, as we saw Regeneron, Biomarin. All right, let's let's hear you trade, bull. So yeah, bought three ninety six, um, added up through a hundred, added a break even, not a break even, but a hundred dollars psychological level. We have a lesson on why. You know, once stocks are above that, they tend to stay above for a little longer than most like to assume. So for me, you know, at the major level, 99, 99 stop, it's, you know, 20% higher. And again, we have a target, you know, that retest of 150. And again, like we talked about with that VCR earlier in the chart talk, when it gets back to that 150, we'll look to take some off, but we'll still expect it to kind of flag out and make that, that next setup. Um, that's my target, you know, a few months out. That was a decent, you know, good trade that I'm sitting in. Uh, next is PFPT. This is a good example of why you don't want to anticipate trades. So this is so shaky. Let me know you got it out. I got it. All right. So PFPT, and if you, if you want to zoom out a little bit, that 132, 128 has been a pretty big macro level, you know, going back to 2018. And we've been, you know, trying to get, you know, get some stock in this thing and, you know, be prepared for that 132 breakout. We've had a few trades in it in the past that have worked out, you know, pretty well. Um, recently, I started to buy up. <laughs> not, not for you. Um, <laughs> it's, been, it's been good to me for the most part. But nice. more. more more recently, um, bought up through 116. Again, very loose stop, very wide. Bought up again through it again. But again, we can kind of see where 120 was kind of a little bit more of a significant level. But I was, again, trying to cheat it, trying to anticipate it, and then again, further anticipating the 132 breakout. So now it's not really working. So this is an example of when people, new trades like, well, if you expect it to break 100, why can't I just buy it when it's at 80? Because it might not go to 100 for a few years. Um, so this is a good example of what not to do, just focus on buying up through the level when it's actually going to go versus trying to cheat or anticipate. So this is obviously not a good trade. Um, and then lastly, this Travelers. This was another bad trade. Um, Travelers was a name I kind of got in a little bit too early during the coronavirus. And everything was getting a little crazy end of February. Um, but did get a decent add up through 100 in May to kind of bring that cost average down. And I was looking to sell into that 132. Oh. And it just... Didn't get up there. Was like one one day too short, and then just you know pulls back thirty points, which in this name is a pretty decent pull in. I but now the thing is, <clears throat> when it gets back to one thirty two, this next time I can't be looking to sell it there because if it's getting back up there now the third time, it's more than likely to go higher. So again, that limit sell order is canceled, and I'll have to look to sell given this pull in. You know, ideally aiming for one fifty or higher, given how much I've had to hold it for this little pullback. Um, so again, those are two kind of bad trades. One for doing it, you know, try not to anticipate. And then with travelers being a little bit too greedy on that sell, you're not being able to bring it down once the name did start to turn and roll back over. So, Shake, you want to take over with some of your trades? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually have, I'm ready. Didn't I'm ready. have any, any, no noodle arms this week? No noodle arms. Um, all right, so I'll start with the good. And when we, you know, the non noodle boys, we got this Etsy. <laughs> we started with this Etsy. Uh, what was that? I priced like 82 or something with like a 78 stop, 79 stop. I think it was $3 risk. You know, up like almost 20 bucks in the name at this point. Sold some for 20, over 20 bucks on the breakout. I did sell some before we went to LA in this like 87 region, which fucking kills just a vacation sell. But um, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, as soon we, as we landed, I, yeah, you were like in the, we were in the Uber. I yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. I was pumped about it. 
fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we made a great adjustment here where it was like we saw some weakness those first two days, and I keep talking about buying the dip, and that first weakness was on all the Corona names held in strong. Like this, you saw this little pivot that Etsy put in. So that kind of uh, clued us into that one. The next one was Peloton. Uh, this one was, we did really well with this one. Same trade we were talking about as Vishal before. Just kind of kicking into strength here. Uh, and then we got to fucking go to the bed. Now we'll go to the bed. Fuck AMD. This AMD has been such a bitch. Such a bitch. It, I bought it through 54. It has this beautiful macro level. Kicked a third into the 56 and 59 area. Uh, but I held on to two thirds all the way back. Held it against 52. And then I was adding in this 54, in this 54 area just against this little... Uh, mini micro support we are holding on to today against 5350 and I got stopped out of that today I've been in that name you know too long up and down P&L forever very sick of that name but um, I'm gonna watch it against this little trend line here see if it holds it 52 to 50 area um, what we got next we'll go to the FT&T absolutely brutal this week uh, I bought this one Monday early uh, I, I saw that you weren't trading you went right to Arizona after LA so I knew I was buying that dip again <laughs> and <laughs> FTNT was like the strongest name on the board Monday. I was super psyched because this wasn't one of my top names that I was watching, but I typed it up. I saw the volume, made quick adjustments, called it out in the chat, and it was the strongest name on the board Monday. Then we have this weakness Tuesday, and it just gives it all back. I, I kicked like 5 or 10% of my position, nothing much. Um, so I, I ended up taking a loss in this one. Brutal um, when it looks so good. But that's kind of the action we saw this week. What else? I got this GBT. Bought this one at support. Kept it tight. Bought 68. Got stopped out at 66 here. Um, that one stunk. This Masi. Oh. Got the rippers over there, huh? MASI. We were buying this one. This is trade of the week. I got. To, I, I just took off most yesterday when everything was coming in. Um, and then today we have the little saviors. I got short right off the open. This NVCR. Um, this saved my saved my whole week. Uh, these two shorts I put on NVCR and this. Uh, this JCOM, both of these look great. So if market wants to continue down, I'm not in such a terrible position. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, switching over those Corona names with the Etsy and Piton, um, you know, some good bucks to make. But it stunk what happened with the the other tech names we were in. Uh, but you know, that's that's the nature of the beast sometimes. So I'll keep watching those names. I think they still look good. All right, uh, where are we going from here? We got uh, top ideas. All right, what do you got for me? So I got, we mentioned before that IONS, IONS through 60. I love this. This is on my list. Yeah. And then uh, ACAM continues to wedge and right. get tighter, two, tighter and tighter. Two on my, those are two on my list. Let me cross those off. Luckily, <laughs> I keep a bag full of fucking uh, charts for you, Bennett. Where are we going? Um, this Silk. Silk looks awesome. Uh, Silk Road Medical. Uh, stayed really strong in this pretty thin name, but if it can get above this 42, 60, 43 area, Looks really good to go higher. Uh, that IONS you mentioned, this APTI, uh, very sneaky recent IPO. What's up? I'm not getting the chart here. Are you getting that APTI? I can't get it on. Yeah. I can't get okay. it on. Um, I can get it on my trading platform. What the? Is that not, not the ticker? Applied. Oh, AMTI. 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 Applied Molecular Transport Inc. Um, so this one's just a recent IPO. These IPOs have been going really well lately. So I'm going to watch this one. And then some shorties to keep on the list. This CTSH. Uh, just a macro pattern. Can't bounce at an inflection point. You know, we were looking, I was looking at this one. I was wondering if it was going to be a long coming to today. Just very weak. So I think if it breaks this most recent pivot at 53, definitely see some lower prices. And then we got to keep a close eye on this light. Like something big is coming out of light. And it's either... You know, this, this is just such a high beta name. And this macro pattern is just getting so, so, so tight. And it had the weakness today, uh, collapsed at the close, and it's testing this 200-day SMA. I don't know if it's a long, I don't know if it's a short. I just know it's testing a big, big, big area. If I see volume push through this, like, 70-ish area, I wouldn't be afraid to short it. If I see a big reversal, I wouldn't be afraid to get long. So I'm going to watch the price action at this inflection point. But, um, yeah, those are, those are a few I'm watching. Book of the week time? I think it's book of the week, yeah. All right, all right. Sure. Book of the week. We got Asian, uh, Asian influence. It's a guy who used to work for like the CIA, and now he like transitions into the business world and he goes through all of his, all the like, negotiating tactics they use in CIA to kind of pull information from the people they were going after, and they just pivot that towards your prospect, kind of pull out information, what are their objections, 
you know, what are their obstacles to kind of get them through to, you know, buying you know, your service or your product that you're selling. Um, but it's like a very fun read. You feel like you're like in, you know, Bond, Jason Bond. Or not, uh -huh. You got what I'm saying. Like, it's like a yeah. James Bond movie, like in a book version. Yeah. But, uh, it's a fun little read. All right. What about you? Um, I'm reading uh, Momentum Masters, uh, old, old book. It's uh, interview style. Uh, Dan Zanger, Mark Ritchie, Mark Minervini, and David Ryan, four like uh, really uh, for, uh, top tier traders of the last you know, 30, 40 years or whatever it be. Um, at just breakout style trading and how they trade and what they look for, the symptoms of each stock, the characteristics from the technicals to the fundamentals. And it's a very quick read and easy read. Um, so, uh, you know, you put that, pick that one up and put it down in a day. So, uh, Momentum Masters, it's always a goodie. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Yes, good luck, happy trading. Good luck. Good luck.